It's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. On the first partition of today's cold boot, we're taking a look at definite confirmation of the existence of NVIDIA's new RTX 3070 and 3080 Ti variants. As if everything leading up to now wasn't enough to prove the existence of these new models from NVIDIA, Razer has officially spilled the beans as they currently have pre-orders up on their website for pre-built systems that include both new models. If you go back several months, NVIDIA had plans of releasing a 3080 Ti, but that never materialized, and we ultimately ended up seeing those dies being used in 3090s instead. Rumor was NVIDIA was worried about backlash from the community as they already couldn't keep up with the demand for the new RTX cards, and adding another variant to the mix would possibly leave gamers with a bad taste in their mouths. Well, Jensen and NVIDIA appears to have said YOLO to that, and they're moving forward with not only the 3080 Ti, but also the 3070 Ti. I'm not sure what's different now that made them decide to move forward this time as GPUs are just as hard to get currently as they were when the first mention of a 3080 Ti started making the rounds. One noteworthy item for these two new GPUs is that both will be LHR models, or light hash rate, they won't be denoted as this on the packaging as there were never regular models of these GPUs, but nevertheless, if you were hoping to get one of these and pull double duty by gaming and then mining in your off time, this isn't the GPU for you as they won't provide the same hash rate you would expect from GPUs with this amount of performance. Speaking of crypto mining, on the second partition of today's episode, we're discussing the crypto mining bubble and China's crackdown on mining and cryptocurrency in general. Following a meeting of China's vice premier and other government officials, not only Bitcoin, but several other coins have trended downward this week. One crucial quote from the meeting that seems to have stoked the decline was, we should crack down on Bitcoin mining and trading activities and prevent individual risks from being passed to the whole society. As you can imagine, this has raised alarm bells for anyone mining and trading coin within China, and ultimately pushed a massive sell-off of currency as no one wants to be the last one standing when and if China decides to actually crack down on the digital currencies. The popularity of cryptocurrency mining usually comes in waves and always ends with a bubble that eventually pops, and we may very well be on the verge of a pop. While this is terrible news for anyone betting big on crypto and crypto mining, it's welcome news for PC gamers and anyone trying to get their hands on a video card for any reason. Here at Let's Get Techie, we've been mining with our main gaming rig to supplement income, which I think is similar to a lot of gamers who've been lucky enough to score a new NVIDIA RTX 3000 series card. While it's been nice to have an extra chunk of income, it's absolutely demolished the PC market and made it tough to even create content around the subject so we'll gladly trade off the small amount of money for being able to get back to some normalcy. For those of you who've been unable to build a new PC this year, hold out just a little bit longer, and with a bit of luck, things may be looking up relatively soon. If the crypto bubble does indeed pop, we'll see the used market flooded with cards that have been used for mining. While sometimes these can pose good value, you have to be careful because you never know how hard the particular card has been pushed. Crypto mining tends to take a toll on video cards and the term road hard and put up wet comes to mind. If the market does become flooded with used mining cards, this should, in theory, temper the pricing hikes we've seen at the retail level. Fingers crossed, within the next three to six months, we may actually be able to get back to some normalcy. On the next partition of today's cold boot is news out of AMD and their Radeon GPU division. A few years ago, when Nvidia launched their first RTX series of cards, they came with a new software known as DLSS, or Deep Learning Super Sampling. This basically upsampled gameplay to a higher resolution with less performance penalty, and while it wasn't very good in its first implementation, it's since come a long way. This has left anyone with an AMD GPU asking when they would get their answer to DLSS. A few days ago, a patent from AMD surfaced, and sure enough, this patent is concerning their answer to DLSS. AMD is calling their technology FSR, or Fidelity FX Super Resolution. According to VideoCards.com, who found the patent filing, it's still not 100% that this is the technology AMD will use for FSR. It's possible that AMD was pursuing several different avenues to power FSR and certainly would have filed a patent for each of the proposed methods. What's noteworthy with this one in particular is that it uses deep learning and AI to achieve the upsampling, which is the same method NVIDIA uses with DLSS. The big difference, though, is NVIDIA has implemented tensor cores in its GPUs that are specific to the task, 
While AMD does not have dedicated hardware in their consumer RDNA2 graphics cards to support this. What's maybe even more interesting is the fact that this patent claims this particular method would be possible on hardware other than just AMD's own RDNA2 cards. This points to whatever the actual root method is, not requiring an equivalent to NVIDIA's Tensor Core. Video Card states that if this patent does indeed show the final plan for FSR, AMD could open this technology up to other devices such as handhelds, TVs, tablets, and even NVIDIA GPUs, although I'm not sure AMD would find it beneficial to give the competitor's hardware a boost in performance. At the end of the day, it remains to be seen if this is in fact the technology AMD will use to achieve FSR as this patent was filed in 2019 and it's possible they've moved on to bigger and better things. The YouTube channel Cortex claimed in a recent video that he had information that AMD would be releasing FSR in June. So if that proves to be true, we won't have to wait long to see what AMD has up their sleeves to take the battle to NVIDIA. Last up today is the new SOC taking the tech community by storm. Now to be clear, new Apple technology is always a big deal for Apple fanatics and diehards. That's nothing new. What's different this time around is the reception it's gotten from people on the fence and even some PC enthusiasts. Apple debuted its new M1 SoC last year in both the 13-inch MacBook Pro and MacBook Air as well as the Mac Mini. This new silicon is based on the ARM architecture and is very similar to what we've seen in previous iPhones and iPads. This isn't the first time we've seen ARM make an appearance in the desktop space, but it does mark the first time we've seen it be truly successful. Apple has chosen to tightly integrate this SoC with the storage and RAM. The RAM is actually soldered right next to the CPU die itself, greatly increasing the communication speed versus the usual slotted in RAM. One additional benefit to this new design over previous generation Intel based Macs is the power efficiency. This chip uses eight CPU cores, four lower performance power efficient Ice Storm cores, and four high performance Firestorm cores. This new efficiency gain has allowed for incredible battery life in the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, with the Pro seeing as much as 20 plus hours on a single charge. Apple enthusiasts questioned at this point, since it's basically an A14 Bionic on steroids and is capable of such power savings, what other devices will we see adopt the M1? Well, that answer came at Apple's event on April 20th. At their 420 event, Apple showed the M1's power was good enough to use in a desktop iMac, but also that its power efficiency was good enough they could stick it into the iPad Pro as well. It's now obvious just how seriously Apple is taking this transition to their in-house silicon across the entire lineup. Personally, I've never considered myself a Mac person. I've had some MacBooks in the past, but I've always been predominantly a PC user. That was thrown out the window when I started watching coverage of the M1. At the time, for mobile computing, I was using a 15-inch HP Pavilion notebook with a Ryzen 4000 series chip. It was no slouch, but when attempting to do some video editing on it, it was immediately clear it was not capable of handling my particular workflow. Around this same time, I was seeing video after video of M1 devices beating not only PC laptops, but in some cases, even full-fledged desktops depending on the workflow. I had to check it out for myself, so I ordered a MacBook Air. The Air arrived and I was absolutely blown away. Forget comparing it to the Pavilion laptop I had, this incredibly thin and light device was capable of rivaling my desktop and video editing performance. Now as we saw in April, Apple is full steam ahead throwing this SoC into anything and everything they can. If the rumors are to be believed, Apple's now planning on releasing a higher performance version of the M1 later this year, dubbed the M1X. We're expecting this to show up in the redesigned 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Not only will the M1X up the CPU performance with additional cores, but it's also suspected to build upon the already class leading graphics performance by adding additional GPU cores as well. We're looking forward to see what Apple has in store for the rest of 2021 and their full transition from Intel to internally developed silicon. There will always be individuals who can't make the switch, but in our opinion, this is the first time Apple has made a truly compelling argument for PC users to come to the dark side. I won't be getting rid of my desktop PC anytime soon, but I'll certainly continue to enjoy using this new M1 Air and keep an eye out for what Apple releases in the future. Make sure to get subscribed if you aren't already for future coverage of the Apple Silicon transition. Let us know down in the comments if you think AMD's FSR will be competitive with NVIDIA's DLSS. Also, we're curious what you think about Apple's new silicon. 
We would assume the majority of our audience are PC users, but would you even consider switching to Apple if it was possible for your particular use case? Do you think the mining bubble is about to pop? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments, and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subbed, and click that like button if you enjoyed this video. And that's going to do it for this first episode of Cold Boot. We appreciate you watching, and we will see you in the next one.